The first fundamental concept I want to cover is that Redux uses a single source of truth. Now, this might sound a bit odd, but essentially all it means is that Redux uses a single JavaScript object to represent its entire application state. And this can often be called the state or the state tree. Now Redux has a store, which we'll cover later on. And that store is just the object that holds the application state. So the state of your whole application is stored in an object tree within a single store. As I said, we'll cover stores later on. So don't worry about that bit too much. Let's just focus on the state and the fact that it's a single source of truth. It's probably easier if I show you exactly what state might look like for a simple application. So let's imagine if we have an application like Kickstarter and let's ignore the whole kind of users and logging in, logging out, etc., etc. Let's just focus on projects. So imagine we have a page that displays an array of projects. So we might represent that state as an array of objects. And that array of objects, that state might look something like this. So an array of objects, obviously. So we might have an ID, we might have the project itself. So I don't know, a mission to Mars, for example, quite an ambitious project. And we'll have a goal. So the total amount of money they wanna get, let's go for an easy one for a thousand dollars and whether it's funded or not. And let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll do this emission to Venus. So that's an example of a simple application state. It's just an array of objects, nice and simple. So our application state can be simple, but it can also be pretty complex. If you think about an application like Uber, for example, it's quite a complex application. There's quite a few things going on. So let's take the example of perhaps an Uber driver and how might we represent a more complex state for something like that. Again, it's gonna be a single object because remember, we have a single source of truth. That's the first fundamental of Redux. So for, for an Uber driver, we might have a profile object. This might have the name, let's go for Bob. Might have an ID of two, an email of blah at blah.com. You might have a rating of five and lots of other properties within that object. But then we might also have an array of passengers nearby. So obviously Uber has to have some way to represent passengers that are nearby. So this array might be an array of IDs of passengers, information about passengers. We might also have notifications. Obviously there's gonna be lots of notifications going on within Uber and for individual drivers. We might have an array of completed rides, so completed journeys that that driver has done. We might have an array of payments. We might then have an array of ratings, and this ratings array might be an array of objects again. It might have the customer ID, so five, and then the rating that this driver got for that customer. So you can see here that this is very quickly developing into a much more complicated state than the first application. Now, obviously this is just a very, very simple example and something I've just pulled out of thin air basically, just, just a very basic overview of what a more complicated application state may look like. So another thing to take into account is that no matter how large our application gets, we still 
always represent our state as a single object. So we always have a single source of truth. And that's the first fundamental of Redux. In the next video, we'll check out fundamental number two. If you like my videos, please subscribe, like, and comment.